So a couple of years ago, um, actually, what my my oldest uh, one of my oldest series on this channel uh, is just like two videos about um, projective geometry, and I leave it on a cliffhanger, promising to improve something about the real projective plane, and then I just haven't touched it for like two years. Um, what happened was I just sort of lost interest in that series. I didn't really want to go through that proof in detail like I had promised. Um, and I still don't. But someone made a comment on one of my videos recently that they were looking forward to the next installment in the series. So um, still not wanting to put a lot of effort. I'm, I'm just not feeling the projective geometry right now. Um, but I figured I would make, because someone asked, I figured I'd just make this sort of off the cuff video. Um, I'll tell you a couple things about projective spaces more generally. And maybe in the near future, I'll actually make some videos where I talk about like topology and geometry of, of projective space, you know, like a little bit of algebraic geometry or, or maybe some like algebraic topology or something. Um, but I'm just going to keep it, uh, it's not going to be like a rigorous video like ones that I sometimes do. This is just sort of like off the cuff. I'm working from memory. Uh, some cool things, uh, I think, about projective space. Um, so, you know, in the in the last video, uh, two years ago, um, we, we defined um, two-dimensional real projective uh, space, right? We talked about um, RP2, the real um, projective plane. Um, it, we also talked about, I think in the video before, we talked about RP1, right? So RP1, we, we found out, um, again, we didn't argue so rigorously, but we found out that basically RP1 is uh, just the circle, um, right? One-dimensional projective space, um, or I should say, you know, homeomorphic, isomorphic. There's a whole bunch of ways, you know, we can view projective spaces like algebraic, um, so, or algebraic geometry, geometry sort of things, or manifolds, or topological spaces. There's different ways to interpret uh, projective space. Uh, there's also um, RP2, the real projective plane, where now, um, so I'm imagining the interior is filled in here because it's a, it, it's a two-dimensional um, space and uh, a space that abides by Pac-Man uh, rules, right? So if, if you approach uh, the boundary here, then you exit the boundary on uh, from the antipodal point, right? So we looked at RP2. Um, and so in today's video, I'm, I'm going to tell you about like how to do, how to create RP um, N in general. And in fact, more generally, we'll talk about how to do this um, with a field. So, so KP um, N. So you can make an n-dimensional projective space with respect to any field. So we could even put like finite fields here um, and we get some, some cool things out of that. Um, in general, uh, you can just make like a, uh, a division uh, ring, I believe. So at least if you, if you make this an ob some sort of object where you can do division and its multiplication is commutative, possibly even non-commutative, but things get kind of weird there. Um, and so, uh, for example, I might have uh, uh, touched on, on this as well. The, the uh, complex projective line, uh, we call it, this is actually the Riemann sphere. And you might be like, wait a second, why is this one dimensional? Um, why is this one dimensional? Uh, see some of my other videos, like my SL2Z uh, video, where I talk about the Riemann sphere. Um, but it's called the complex projective line, because with respect um, to the complex numbers, say as a complex manifold, it really is um, one complex dimensional, right? This is just, you take the complex numbers, um, and you adjoin this, this point at infinity. It looks like a sphere, it looks like something two-dimensional to us, because in terms of, of the real numbers, right, the, the, the complex sort of algebraically, it's like a copy of the real numbers plus a copy of the real numbers times i. So it is two real dimensional while being one complex dimensional. OK, um, so a more general recipe, let me be let me be really general here for a moment, um, is that suppose we have a vector space v and of, of uh, any finite dimension, let's say, over any field. So if that scares you, again, just think about real or complex numbers. Um, and so what we can do is we can form the projective space of this vector space. So what that is, is it's going to be the um, collection 
of all one dimensional uh, subspaces. So, so uh, as a set, this will be all um, one dimensional subspaces is one way to think about it. Um, perhaps a more formal sort of, of, of nice way, uh, a nice way of doing this is you take the vector space and you remove from it your zero vector. So if you think back to those other videos where I talked about these triples, but you take the, the triples so non-all coordinates are zero, uh, well, this is the corresponding statement in the more general theory. Um, and then we, we do very much the same thing, right? So we take our vector space, any uh, dimension, and we mod out, we, we remove the zero vector, and then we're gonna mod out the relation um, uh, of, of, of scalar multiplication. So here we say that uh, two vectors, say u and v, are related um, if and only if there exists some non-zero scalar lambda belonging to, you know, whatever field k your vector space is over, could be real complex, finite fields even, um, then, uh, 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 so, so if and only if there exists a non-zero lambda, such that these two vectors are scalar multiples of each other. Um, and so we can see that these are actually the same definition, right? I mean, uh, what is a one-dimensional subspace? I mean, it's just the span of one vector, right? So a one-dimensional subspace is, is simply the collection of all scalar multiples of some fixed non-zero vector. Um, so that's how we get the equivalence of, of these two uh, definitions here. Um, but this one is sort of the, the nicer, I mean, this is, uh, you know, conceptually, we think about it as a collection of all one-dimensional subspaces, um, but then this is sort of better for the formal realization of it, you know, we're taking some sort of quotient. Okay, so we've already seen some examples, right? So um, if, you, if you just take any two real dimension, uh, 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 vector space of dimension two, right, so, so the real numbers, um, realized as a vector space, if we if we took this definition of the projective space of that vector space, um, what is that? I mean, it is again. There's some confusion about what like category we're in, algebraic manifold, yada yada. Um, but you know, geometrically, this this is exactly the same as as the RP two um, construction I described previously, right? Or like the 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 one dimensional. Um, you know, the complex numbers as a one dimensional vector space over themselves, um, over itself is, is going to be um, exactly the, the complex um, projective line, right? The, the Riemann sphere. Um, and so one thing that, that someone might start asking themselves at this point is, okay, so we formed this collection of all one dimensional subspaces of a vector space. But you might wonder um, a little more generally, what if we let, um, so, so let, uh, you know, V um, be an n-dimensional for some fixed n uh, k vector space, right, over some field k. And instead of just forming the set of all one-dimensional subspaces, um, what if we asked ourselves, uh, what if we said something like um, for k less than or equal to n, um, we're going to let g or sometimes gr, v, k, or sometimes um, if it's we're just denoting the dimension, it'll be gr, n case, maybe sometimes people write the indices in different orders, um, but this is going to be the, the, the set the collection of all k-dimensional subspaces of V, more generally. So this is what is called the Grassmannian of our, um, of our vector space V. And in the case, if, if our field happens to be the, uh, the real numbers or the complex numbers, um, then this actually gives us a manifold. And maybe I'll talk more about that in, in uh, uh, later videos. Um, so that's kind of an interesting uh, concept. It's you know bridging together um, linear algebra and like smooth manifolds and whatnot. So we have our Grassmannians. And uh, so I, I just want to point out something, and, and I think I'll end the, the video um, 
today uh, from here. So, so let's let's fix um, uh, k being equal to r, and let's ask ourselves about some some basic um, Grassmannians. Well, um, what can we do? So, so, so of course the Grassmannians of um, um, I mean, so the zero dimensional subspaces are, are, are uninteresting, right? Those are just like single points. Those aren't, aren't really, you know, or I guess the only uh, uh, zero dimensional subspace, because it has to contain the zero vector, the only zero dimensional subspace um, is just the zero vector itself. So we think about, um, you know, what are all, what if we worked in just the real numbers, right? All the one dimensional subspaces of a one dimensional vector space. Well, that's just the whole vector space, right? So, so uh, this would just be the the entire vector space uh, V. Um, you'll have to excuse me one moment while I mute uh, Discord because I don't want these uh, annoying messages popping up. Um, and uh, so, I suppose I should write down the zero dimensional case, right? So, so the zero dimensional subspaces for any vector space V, that's just going to be the set containing zero. The one dimensional subspaces of a one dimensional vector space is just going to be that vector space. Um, okay, so these are sort of like uninteresting degenerate cases. Um, in the case of uh, if you looked at all, I mean, in general, the one dimensional spaces of, of any vector space, this is just the projective space um, as defined above, right? That just gives us ordinary projective space. So then we want to start asking about. Um, so the next level up is is the the two dimensional um, subspaces. But again, uh, two dimensional subspaces of a two dimensional vector space is just that total vector space itself. Nothing new, interesting yet. Um, and then, so you might be tempted to think that, well, okay, what about the two dimensional subspaces of a three dimensional vector space? Um, but it turns out that um, geometrically, you know, when, when we try and write this down, or even as a set, it's it's is more or less equivalent um, to just the projective space of this. Um, I mean, in this case, this is a, 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 a three-dimensional um, uh, vector space. So, so this would be just RP2. We don't have anything um, new yet. Uh, why is that? Well, if you think about it, um, every single, uh, at least for a, a real vector space here, so we have our, our total vector space V is some three-dimensional vector space. Now pick a two-dimensional vector space, right? Let's say U is two-dimensional. Well, then the orthogonal complement um, of U is going to be some one-dimensional vector space, right? So for each two-dimensional um, vector space in this Grassmannian here, there's a corresponding one-dimensional vector space, which is its complement. And conversely, for every one-dimensional vector space, there's going to be a two-dimensional vector space that it's, um, is its complement. So on one level, we just have this bijection of sets. But um, in fact, maybe I'll do this in a later video, but I don't want to make any promises. If you just go through this construction, uh, what ends up happening is uh, you see that, in fact, even on the geometric um, level, the this space as, as a manifold or, or algebraic variety um, is just equivalent to some projective space. So the first um, place where we get something actually truly new is the Grassmannian of two-dimensional subspaces of a four-dimensional vector space. Because if you tried to pull the same complement trick, um, you find this association just with the um, the uh, two-dimensional vector spaces, right? This, this full four-dimensional vector space is just going to split up as a sum of two two-dimensional vector spaces. Um, so that's where I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, we've talked about projective space. We talked about Grassmannians. Um, and, you know, it is very believable that before too long, I will make another video um, where I talk about, uh, you know, more geometry, topology, uh, things like that. Just, again, probably this loose, um, off-the-cuff uh, uh, way of doing things. So see you next time.